What's up, YouTube? Today we have got a leaker. So the setup here is we have two very old McQuay condensing units with two circuits each, four compressors, each condenser, eight total circuits. This circuit on the back side right here keeps going flat. So the this is for a school district. The school ISD people keep coming in, throwing refrigerant in. They're like, oh, it's going flat, it's going flat. We don't know where the leak is. Uh, we've put nitrogen on it. Yada, yada, yada. Everything's been converted to MO99. These are our 22 systems, so. Not by my choice, but. You can see I'm uh, gauged up right here on this dryer core shell. And we have absolutely nothing. So I didn't see any oil stains or anything like that on any of this piping right here or on the condensing coils. I have isolation valves at the dryer right there. So pretty much what we're going to do is perform an isolation test separating the coil and the condensing unit. So coming in here, I'll show you where the condensing units go to. This very old carrier air handler. And these are a pain in the ass to service. Like they don't make it serviceable at all to get to the coil. I'm hoping we don't have a giant leak in the evaporator coil or that's gonna be a real pain in the ass. You know, like the only way you can really get to it is to take all these panels off right here. You know, they've, they've been neglecting this equipment for a long time and now that school's getting ready to start, they're in panic mode. So, this is my liquid line for that circuit. This is my suction line. And right here, we have a hot gas bypass line. I noticed when I came up right here on this liquid line, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there was oil all over right here. Um, I hit it with electronic leak detector, but it really wasn't picking anything up because there wasn't a lot of pressure in the system. You can see there's just oil all over. You can see it's literally pooled up right there. So if I rub my finger on it, so what I'm planning on doing is putting an uh, isolation valve with a pressure tap right here. We'll put one on the hot gas bypass so it doesn't backflow. And then I'll put an isolation valve right here. I think this is two and one eighth copper. So we have an extra one of these at the shop, so they won't get charged too much for that. Um, the line set did drop down right here, but my suppliers didn't have that available. And I'll honestly have more room to work right here. So, like I said, we'll put a ball valve here, ball valve here, ball valve here, turn them off and that way we can pressurize this circuit into the evaporator coil and isolate it from the line set going back to the condensing unit. Uh, I'm almost positive there's a leak right here just from the oil all over the place, but I'm not sure where. The, the brazes look okay. I don't see any like cracks in the lines or anything, but we'll find out when we put nitrogen on it. And once we figure that out, I'll also be able to pressurize from the condensing unit to the ball valve and we'll check the condenser section as well so let me get all this prepped i'll get my ball valves in there get y'all some more footage and then we'll go from there all right guys so we're going to start off with these smaller 7 8 lines i've got it piped in right here so i've said this in previous videos and i'm sure all you guys know but whenever you're brazing in something like this a ball valve or anything with a schrader core you want to make sure you pull the core out take the cap off Got the core pulled there, cap off. I've got some Viper wet rag. Uh, 
applied to the valve itself to prevent it from overheating and pulling the Schrader core will prevent it from overheating too and any pressure backing up inside and it'll keep that Schrader core from burning. So I've got my line, line sanded really well. Let's get the torches going. We'll braze this one in, braze this one in, and then we'll work on this big suction line. Try to get y'all some brazing footage. Okay guys, got these braised in on the liquid line and the hot gas bypass line. Braises look good, checked them with a mirror. Waited a uh, good amount of time, let the valve cool before I put the Schrader cores back in. Uh, got this one in. I really like this Viper wet rag product. So, it can kind of be a pain to get off whenever you get it on there, but a little tip is when it hardens from the heat that you've put on there, if you just get it damp with a wet rag and kind of reconstitute it, it'll peel right off and then you can reuse it. So now that we got those in, I'm gonna work on getting this big old sucker put onto the suction line, then we'll be able to fully isolate the circuit, the evaporator coil from the condenser section and pressurize. I know we've got a leak somewhere in here. Once we find that and correct that issue, uh, we'll re-pressure check it and make sure the evaporator circuit itself is not leaking. All right guys, got everything brazed in. Got the two and one, one eighth inch ball valve brazed in. <clears throat> All the brazes look good. Like I said earlier, let the ball valve cool cool down before I put the Schrader core back in. So we're ready to do the isolation leak test from this side to the air handler for this circuit. So I've shut off the air handler and the condensing units so I can kinda uh, hear a little better because I'm gonna pressurize it with nitrogen. I've got the ball valve closed to prevent backflow. Ball valve closed to prevent backflow. And I have 
this ball valve closed to prevent backflow. So I'm going to gauge up to this suction line and this liquid line. We're going to pressurize it with nitrogen, see if we can find this leak. Well, that didn't take too terribly long to find our first leak culprit. So as soon as I pressurized it, I can feel, feel air coming. Looks like it's coming from right there. Right on that flare nut. Sp spray the rest of this down. Spray my fittings. Which I'm sure I, are good, you know. Because we never have braze, braze leaks in the field, right? <laughs> All right. I know you guys can hear that. So I got the nitrogen shut off so I'm not wasting any. And that is a big blowout. And that would explain why I had oil all over the place. So I'm gonna take that apart and see if I can correct that. That being said, we're still not out of the neck of the woods yet, okay? Just because we found one leak immediately and we resolve it doesn't mean there's no more leaks. That was the purpose of putting the isolation ball valves so we can separate the condenser from there. So after I correct this leak right here, we'll repressurize it with nitrogen on the air handler side and make sure it holds. If it holds, awesome. At that point, I will pressurize the condenser outside and leave my ball valves closed and make sure we have nothing leaking from here to the condenser. If everything holds tight, We'll replace the dryer core, pull a vacuum on the entire circuit, and recharge it. So first things first, let's take this apart, this one right here, and see what the damage is and see if we can get that taken care of. All right, guys. So what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and cut out a little section right there <clears throat> because I didn't have enough leftover copper to cut back that flare and then reuse what was there. So I got a piece of um, quarter inch copper, put a coupling right there, and used my flaring tool to create a new flare, got a new nut. I uh, actually remembered to put the nut on first. So how many of y'all have ever made a flare before and forget to put the flare nut on and have to redo it? That really sucks. Went ahead and pressurized it. I've got 275 pounds of nitrogen through the suction line and the liquid line going into the air handler. Looks like we don't have any leaks on my new flare fitting. Let's go ahead and spray this down with good old big blue. Sorry about the buzzing. There's a big transformer right behind me. So as y'all can see, no leaks, no bubbles, holding pressure, 275 PSI. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this hold overnight, 275 PSI, and then I'll come back in the morning and uh, check my pressures and make sure it's holding. If we're holding good, I'll go ahead and uh, put some pressure on the condenser section going from the condenser to the ball valve. Pressure check that real quick, make sure it's holding. And if it all looks good, we'll change the dryer core, pull a vacuum, and then recharge this sucker. But it's looking optimistic. I've had 275 on for about, oh, 15 minutes or so. And I haven't budged. It's looking to be pretty tight right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave it overnight just in case and make sure it holds fine, so try to section this video I don't know if I'll make it two parts or one I may just wait until I come back and get the rest of the footage and put it all in one video for y'all check back in with y'all whenever we come back in the morning 
and verify that our pressure check held on the air handler.